Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar today. In this webinar we have the pleasure of telling you about our master's program in neuroscience at the University of Helsinki, Finland. Let me start by introducing our presenters. My name is Juha Voipio and I'm the program director. Sari Lauri is a program board member and one of the key persons in our team. Mikaela Mattila, sitting next to me, graduated very recently and she will tell about neuroscience studies from a student's point of view. Katri Vegelius is the program coordinator and she will tell about career prospects and Mikaela Mattila will tell you how you can apply to the program. The recorded version of the webinar will be made available on our program website. In international rankings, our university um, is among the 20 best universities in Europe and it is among the top 1% of all research universities in the whole world. Neuroscience is one of the strongest fields at our university, so it's a great pleasure for us to have this opportunity to tell you about neuroscience studies at our university. During the next half an hour, we will briefly tell you first about our country, our university, then why master, master studies are attractive here, about the structure and contents of the neuroscience program, career prospects, and the application process. After this, there will be plenty of time for your questions. Now, Mikhaila will continue. Great, thank you, Johan, and, and thank you for everyone joining us. It's a, it's a pleasure to be t here telling you about our university and our program. Um, I'll first start by saying a few words about our country and our city. Perhaps some of you are more familiar with it and some of you are less familiar. Um, but Finland is located in the north of Europe. Uh, we're called the country of a thousand lakes, which I think is a fitting description of the, the constant presence of natural beauty everywhere. Uh, we have four seasons, only during one of which is it actually cold. And, um, and despite this, there's a surprising warmth uh, in, in our country and in our people, which I'm sure you'll, you'll notice very soon after you arrive here. Um, Finland is among uh, the top 10 most educated countries in the world. Uh, you might also see our name come up in lists of uh, measures like uh, government transparency, uh, social stability, gender equality, and safety, which we also uh, take pride in. Uh, Helsinki is our capital, located on the coast of the Baltic Sea. It is our biggest city, but despite that, it's actually surprisingly small. Um, it's known for its beautiful architecture, which, in, which you can see parts of in this, uh, in this scenery, but it still has all the amenities that you could ask for in a major capital city. Um, in the Metropolis 2016 survey, it was actually ranked as the third best country in the world to live in, which is, which is pretty cool. Uh, and the other thing that really adds to the, uh, to the vibrancy and the atmosphere of the city is the fact that we have, uh, in total, I think 63,000 students here. Um, so this really is a, is a student city with, with a fitting atmosphere. So the city center itself is quite compact, and the main campus of the university is also found uh, within the city center. Um, but in addition to this, the University of Helsinki has several campuses located a few kilometers outside of the city center. And this provides for a lot of really great modern premises, especially uh, for life sciences. Uh, and the picture that you see here is actually the VT campus, so the campus where the neuroscience uh, studies are conducted and also a lot of the other biological uh, uh, sciences. And one of the things I really enjoy about it is it's only a short bus ride away from the city center, uh, but literally just outside the view of this photo towards the right, actually there's a really beautiful big forest that can go for really long, nice walks if you just want to clear ahead or want to enjoy the, want to enjoy the nature. So it's really, really nice for that. Um, and I believe Juha is next going to tell you a little bit more about the university itself and what it has to offer you. Okay, the University of Helsinki is the oldest, biggest and best university in Finland and as I already said, it ranks to the very top in all international evaluations. We have 35,000 degree students, out of which 6% are international and this percentage is steadily increasing. Our 11 faculties cover the widest range of disciplines in Finland and the opportunities to study in English at master's level and at doctoral level are excellent here. We have over 30 international two-year master's programs in different fields of science, all fully in English. These master's programs 
provide a solid basis for doctoral studies and roughly every second student graduating from life sciences, including neuroscience, continue studies towards a PhD. There are no tuition fees for European Union citizens, but we do have fees for students coming from outside Europe. However, they can apply for scholarships made available by our university. Michaela will continue. Great. So now to actually tell you what the, the reasons for my coming to the University of Helsinki to study and the reasons why you should also apply to us. Um, and of course, you don't have to just take it on uh, my authority, but we actually have the International Student Barometer results from 2014 present on the screen here. So these are the main reasons that international students have given to uh, why they chose uh, to study at Helsinki. And the good reputation and the excellent level of teaching are, of course, the top reasons uh, for choosing our school. Um, the learning environment itself is fantastic. There are a lot of labs um, conducting the research and actually also participating in the teaching. And the learning spaces are really modern and accommodating to any kinds of needs. Uh, the library services and information technology are freely available to all of our students, uh, which really makes learning a lot easier. Uh, and we also have really fantastic sports services, and you can find a lot of information on them, even in English. Um, so these are uh, kind of facilities located all around the campus in the city center and also here with us. And the other great thing is, of course, that Helsinki is a really great and safe city to live in, which makes it a, a really nice environment for all of us. Um, and I myself have been very, very happy with my choice of studying in Helsinki. One of the things that uh, also deserves a mention uh, is that the student community is really vibrant and cross-disciplinary. There's a lot of events. Uh, so whatever kind of your favorite way of spending your time in your free time is, uh, there will be a place somewhere where you can find uh, people who like similar things and a place for you to fit in. So that's been something that I've really enjoyed. Um, in addition to these reasons, the main reason why I chose to study at Helsinki was the fantastic, uh, the depth and the range of the different courses that were offered. So there's really great kind of foundational basic neuroscience teaching uh, covering all the, the major topics that you need to know, uh, which is really great for kind of deepening your knowledge in things that you're already knowledgeable in and also extending it to things that you might not have known from your previous studies. And very quickly after you've covered the basics, you get to move on to a more customizable part of your degree, where you get to choose specialist courses uh, taught by really enthusiastic and knowledgeable researchers in a really wide range of fields. So there's electrophysiology, cell biology, genetics, neuropharmacology, just to name a few. And the studying itself is organized really well. So in, in addition to the traditional lectures, which I'm sure everyone is familiar with, there's a lot of different teaching techniques utilized in all the different courses, which for me at least was really great because it makes the teaching so much more immersive and it's so much nicer to be there and, and to be learning. And it's also great um, because it prepares you for whatever career path you choose to go on to after you graduate from the university. Um, so having kind of, you know, for example, seminars and group work and learning to present things and learning to write things is really, really useful for your career, in, at least as much as the kind of the practical and the theoretical knowledge that you'll be gaining here. So some of you may be wondering what your life would look like if you chose to, uh, chose to come and study here with us. So I thought I'd give you a quick example of one of my kind of typical weeks. And of course, especially during the elective phase, your typical week will vary quite a lot. So the number of lectures per week will be quite different depending on your week. Uh, during the example week that I chose, uh, I was attending a neuroepigenetics lecture course, which ran for, I think it was two hours every morning, uh, so for five days a week. Uh, in the afternoons during this example week, I would spend some time working in a laboratory, uh, which I would later go on to do my master's degree in. At the time, I was doing assisting work and learning lab techniques, so things that really helped me when I was actually doing my master's. Uh, on Tuesday afternoon that week, I took the bus down to the Mailati campus, which is where the uh, uh, Faculty of Medicine is, and they actually had a really nice course on bioinformatics, where we had lectures and practical programming uh, exercises, which was really nice. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, we had a seminar course, which was organized specifically for us neuroscience students, where we would practice things like writing and publishing, and, and we would hear kind of talks relating to these. And then finally on Friday, uh, we would have a uh, student presentation part of a laboratory animal science course, 
where students had prepared presentations and we would present to each other and then also give peer feedback, which is a really nice kind of constructive way uh, to end the week. And of course, the next burning question that I'm sure many have is what would your whole degree look like? And you will give you the details of that next. Okay, so let's focus next on the structure of the master's program in neuroscience. It's a two-year full-time master's program with a total of 120 credits. About half of these, or 60 credits, consists of obligatory th studies, which include a master's thesis project, and the other 60 credits can be chosen more freely from courses arranged by our program and closely, re closely related programs such as those shown here. Studying begins in September and the academic year is divided into two terms and four periods, followed by the summer months. The first autumn term, the autumn term of your first year, uh, consists of uh, uh, compulsory studies where, where you will have only few options to choose from. After the autumn term, you will have a good general knowledge of neuroscience and you have had plenty of time to prepare your personal study plan for your subsequent optional studies. During the two periods of the spring term of the first year, you will direct your studies to the areas that interest you most. You will choose from a wide range of optional lecture and laboratory courses that will deepen your knowledge and improve your practical skills. Here you see a list of themes and topics of optional studies within the field of neuroscience. Molecular and cellular neuroscience, electrophysiology and biophysics, neuroscience in health and disease, and developmental neuroscience and regeneration are topics that are popular among our students. You can also focus on systems and cognitive neuroscience or on a bit more physiologically oriented topics such as sensory physiology and omics. During the summer months, there are possibilities for practical training, or you can work more independently, making use of our e-courses. You can read for book exams, or if you need to do retake exams, that is also possible during the summer months. The second year of your studies will consist consist of optional courses so that you will obtain the required total number of credits and you will do your master's thesis. You are supposed to complete your studies in two years, but there is no absolute deadline at the end of the second year. Next, Sari Lauri will tell you more about research training and the master's thesis. Okay, so one feature of the program is that a large part of your degree can be actually obtained by actively, actively participating in scientific research. So many of our research-oriented students actually start their experimental research work already during the end of their first year. With a practical training period in a research group in the field of their own interest. This work can then continue as master's thesis, or if you prefer, you can then choose another project and join another group for your thesis work. And this kind of hands-on experience on research work is highly valuable for your future career. And indeed, many of our master's students have actually contributed to high-impact research papers already during their studies, and after obtaining the degree, have then continued for PhD. During your first year studies, you will get to know the local neuroscientists and the research groups as research scientists actually participate in the teaching program. Once you are ready to start with your thesis project, you can then choose a project and join one of the neuroscience research groups operating in the University of Helsinki. So we have leading research groups in various fields of neuroscience, ranging from molecular and cellular neuroscience to systems level neuroscience and human brain imaging. And uh, we have also strong groups focusing on clinical aspects of neuroscience and in particularly studying the neurodegenerative disorders.
For more information on the research group, you can check the web pages of university departments and research institutes. So life sciences in the Helsinki University operate on two campuses. In the Wiki campus, we have a Department of Biosciences, Neuroscience Center, and the Institute of Biotechnology, which hosts very good level of research groups in molecular and cellular neuroscience, focusing particularly on neurotrophic factors, developmental neuroscience, synaptic transmission, and plasticity. Meilahti campus is the home for the medical faculty, and there is also the Finnish Institute in Molecular Medicine. So in this campus, there is also a very strong a neuroscience research program, which is integrated to the excellent uh, biomedical research community. So the links to all these research institutes you can find in our master's program webpage for more information. Yes, and about the career path, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, many of our graduates continue in research, uh, mainly in, in biosciences or biomedicine. So uh, more than half of them uh, get into a doctoral program either within the University of Helsinki or, or elsewhere. But those who do not continue in research can find uh, often these expert duties outside academia in, in industry or education and so on. In working on, on the management and the organization, teaching, communication, or business and innovation. This is also a uh, uh, kind of a good pathway for those Finnish and Swedish speaking uh, students who wish to become uh, biology teachers in Finland. So they then, in addition to the subject specific studies, they uh, learn pedagogical uh, matters in courses. And the doctoral training in the University of Helsinki is organized into four doctoral schools, which uh, coordinate 32 doctoral programs. So here are only just a couple of examples of those doctoral programs. One of the doctoral schools is a uh, doctoral school in health sciences, which hosts eight doctoral programs. And these um, approach life sciences from clinical, uh, molecular, or behavioral aspects. And one of these doctoral programs is the brain and mind, which is uh, a popular choice for the master's uh, program in neuroscience candidates, because these uh, both programs, they are coordinated jointly. So once the students come to the master's program in neuro neuroscience, they are immediately kind of welcome to the neuroscience community in the Helsinki area. They get the, the news of the activities and courses that are organized here, and they are welcome to join the doctoral program uh, courses as well. Uh, this program is uh, a joint program between the University of Helsinki and Aalto University. So that brings more um, multidisciplinarity to the program. Um, so that there are about 100 uh, research groups in, in neuroscience and uh, ranging from psychology to biosciences and medicine and, and, uh, and technological sciences. So um, uh, this, is, this is a great, great multidisciplinary community for the students. We currently have about 100 uh, doctoral candidates in the program, and about 40 of them are international, so non-Finnish citizens. A lot of the of the teachers and researchers are also international, so the the whole community is very international. Um, let's uh, next hear from Mikaela Mattila about the application procedure. And before we actually hear more from Michaela Matila, I know uh, that we have a video to be played. 
uh, before uh, hearing more from Michaela, it's about uh, how to apply. Uh, we have about two minutes and 17 seconds uh, before uh, we pass the floor on to Michaela. Uh, just to let you know, guys, that the volume uh, can be set locally on your computer, and I hope you enjoy. And now, uh, having said before, Michaela Matila uh, will fill in the gaps with the application process. Michaela, the floor should be yours. Yes, thank you. So, um, just a quick run through on the application process. So, the basic application requirements are that you have to have an appropriate bachelor's degree, you need to meet the English language requirements. And you can find all the information on acceptable ways of indicating your English language skills and info on the language tests on our website. And you also need to make sure that you meet the country specific requirements. And also information on that can be found on our website. <clears throat> the application period is December 1st to January 12th, 2017. The results will be available in April and the studies will begin in September 2017. The tuition fee for this specific program will be 18,000 euros, and it's citizens of non-EU or EEA countries who do not have a permanent residence status in the area who are liable to the tuition fees. And the fee is per academic year. And uh, as said earlier, we also have a scholarship program, which is intended for excellent students coming from outside the EU or EEA. And the scholarships will be divided into four categories. The first category will be covering the tuition fee, 18,000 euros, plus the living costs, which is 10,000 euros. The second category will be covering the, tuition, uh, the living costs, 10,000 euros. The third will be covering the tuition fee. And the fourth category will be covering half of the tuition fee. All of the scholarships also include the student un union membership fee, which, which is about 100 euros. And the scholarship application will be filled in in the same application system and at the same time which our online application to the master's program. And information, more information about the scholarships and also on the selection process of the scholarships can be found on our website. And you can also find a lot of information on housing, on permits and other 
things related to your arrival to Finland on our website. And now it's time for the question and answer part of this presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of the presenters for uh, taking your time and, of course, for sharing your expertise uh, on this matter. And as indicated uh, by Michaela, we are now in the Q&A part of the webinar where you, our esteemed audience, can submit your questions in writing through the Q&A panel, which you can find to the right of the platform. So feel free to take advantage as today's presenters are at your disposal. And we have a question uh, already in from Paul saying that he has a master's in electrical and would like to study neuroscience to find more about the possible application of neuroscience in electrical power systems, asking what are his scopes. So if I may take this question. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not sure if I sort of understand the question in all details correctly, but um, in general, I think um, sort of uh, a background in, in uh, electrical engineering is a good starting point for studying neuroscience. However, uh, in order to uh, sort of be eligible, you need to have some, some studies in, in uh, biological sciences as well. Uh, but uh, for instance, my own background is in physics, and, and, and there have been sort of many, many students graduating in neurosciences with a master's degree here or with a doctoral degree who originally studied chemistry mathematics, physics, uh, electrical engineering, of course, sort of the majority have been studying biology. Um, but um, it depends. It depends on what you have studied. So if you, if you want to sort of uh, get a more detailed answer, so feel, feel, feel free to contact us. And, and, and uh, I'm, I'm sort of willing to provide you sort of a more specific answer. Thank you very much, Juha. Uh, let's see, we have uh, the next question from Dr. Vagdiano. Uh, he's a clinical pharmacist, pharmacist and would uh, like to be specialized in uh, neuropharmacology. Uh, can he major in this field with this uh, master's degree? Not sure who would be taking on the next question. Katri, or... So, Katri, could you perhaps help uh, Dr. Vagdiano? Yes, I'll try. Um, I think... Uh, can I major in this field from the master's degree? Yes, basically, you can, if, if you... You, you go through the master's program, you learn many things. One of them is, is neuropharmacology, where you can you can um, uh, find courses that are specific to that. And uh, once you have the master's degree, then I mean you can you can do your master's thesis work also in a in a neuropharmacological group research group. And then con continue for, for example, doctoral training in that group. Yeah, I would like to add that we have we have several research groups working in the field of neuropharmacology and, and groups working on addiction and so on. So there are sort of uh, sort of possibilities to uh, get good training in these these fields. Thank you very much, Katri and Yuka. Uh, the next question is coming in from Jessica saying that she graduated six years ago in speech therapy and audiology, and she has work experience, uh, but would like to do academic research. Uh, is the time that she was out of the academic life a problem for the admission? No, it's not. Good news for Jessica then. Uh, let's see, the next question is coming in from Chen. Is a student majoring in linguistics with a neuroscience lab experience, uh, does he satisfy the eligibility criteria? So the student has a major in linguistics, but has neuroscience lab experience. Uh, would that qualify them as being eligible? I think this is once, once again sort of a, one of these questions where it is hard to say mm -hmm. anything uh, anything without seeing seeing sort of all the courses the students has done. 
So, so uh, uh, we are quite open-minded. So, so the students can come to our master's program with quite different backgrounds. But there needs to be some some level of, of sort of basic knowledge in, in in biology because we assume that we can start from that basic level. So, um, it's a bit sort of hard to, hard to really know what the student has studied so far, and, and, and so the answer answer is not sort of a not an easy easy task actually to these kind of questions. Thank you very much, Juha. Um, and then we have a question uh, from Petie: If there's an age limit for the scholarship application? Uh, yeah, no, there are there is no age limit for the scholarship. Thank you indeed, Michaela. Uh, if uh, Natalia would like to know if she hasn't finished her bachelor's degree uh, in at a medical university, she's a last year student now, and she'll uh, graduate in July in the next year. Could she take part in your master's program? Yeah, you can be conditionally accepted. I think Michaela can give the, uh, the the deadline by which you need to graduate with your degree in order to be eligible. <laughs> Yeah, I will just see if I can find the exact deadline. You, the base, you can apply even if you are, have not finished with your bachelor, but I will just see if I can find the exact deadline for the... <clears throat> just one moment. Um, not to rush, uh, Michaela. Perhaps yeah. uh, I can help out with uh, actually opening uh, the poll. We have two short questions for our audience members. Uh, the panel should become available to you guys if you would like to get more information on some aspect of the uh, program and if you are by any chance planning to apply on the program. So thank you very much for providing uh, us feedback through the polling as well. It has no time limit, so feel free to either fill out the poll or submit more questions through the Q&A. So Michaela, perhaps that gave you enough time? Yes, I actually find you actually you can um we can process the bachelor diplomas and transcripts as late as July fifteenth. So that's like the definite deadline for being for uh, completing your bachelor's degree. Thank you very much. Uh and then perhaps the next question is for uh, from Navid. Yes, we can take this one. It's about the brain and mind uh, doctoral program. He's doing an MPhil in physiology and would like to do a PhD. Will he be able to learn basic neuroscience concepts? Is the question. I guess I can answer this. Uh, uh, yes, you can take uh, courses from the master's program when you do the doctoral training here. If you, if you are accepted to the doctoral program, you can take the master's, pro master's courses because we. Uh, I mean, our students or the doctoral candidates, they all come from uh, different fields. So it's, some of them need uh, some specific courses to fill in the gaps that they, they have left during their earlier studies. And so all of these courses are available to you. So I'm sure you'll be able to learn basic neuroscience concepts. Thank you very much, Katri. Uh, Svetlana, I would like to know if it's possible to join the doctoral program with a master degree in biomedical imaging and would also like to know if there's any research group at your university conducting the research in neuroscience with uh, nanotechnology applications. Well, if I take this one, so um, if you have um, sort of a sufficient amount of, of, of sort of biological or physiological studies in your biomedical imaging degree, so then that would be fine. And um, there are there are groups working on, on nanotechnology and, and neuroscience. I can I can just tell you that very recently one student did a master's thesis on uh, nanotechnology safety issues. Thank you, Juha. Uh, let's see. The next question is from Paul, um, asking uh, what is the scope of computational and theoretical neurosciences and other multidisciplinary research involving biology and engineering? Well, um, <clears throat> if I think of uh, 
computa computational or theoretical neurosciences. So we have research groups working on on um, and developing um, analysis tools for neuro uh, and brain imaging methods, sort of uh, very uh, sophisticated methods for analyzing um, MEG, EEG data, and so on. And uh, we have collaboration with the Alta University, University of Technology there, where they have uh, also a neuroscience program. So it's possible for, if, if you are st studying in our, our program, you can also take courses from the Alta University where sort of uh, most of the students there are, are studying physics and electrical engineering. So it's sort of quite a nice option to broaden your knowledge to, to that direction if you're studying here. Thank you once again, Yuka. And then we have a few questions uh, regarding the uh, application process. So Michaela Matila, if you could help us out. Uh, yeah. Statis would like to know if there are any fees for EU applicants? No, there are no tuition fees for applicants coming from the EU. And then the next question is, uh, what is the IELTS score requirement for this course? Um, the minimum requirement for IELTS uh, is 6.5, with a minimum score of 6.0 in the writing section. Thank you very much, Michaela. And I'm not sure if we can help Dimitri with his uh, query uh, about the country-specific requirements. So Dimitri is uh, currently living in Turkey, studying psychology at a French university through distance learning. And he has double nationality, Turkish and Greek. And under which criteria should he apply, is he asking now? Mm. Quite a specific one, I know. Yeah. Um, it depends on which, which uh, degree he's applying with and where that degree, in which country it has been uh, awarded. So the country-specific requirements um, depend on where your degree has been awarded, if that was of any help. <laughs> I believe it was. Thank yeah. you very much, Michaela. Let's see um, if I had a question through the chat panel. Uh, so, um, uh, Navid would like to know how to submit his application for the PhD. Um, you can find, basically, you, you should first find a, a supervisor and a research project. So, that's something that you can, you can for example, go to the uh, Brain and Mind Doctor program website. So that's www.brain slash hyphen mind dot c. And uh, there, in the there's a how to apply uh, page, which kind of explains the basic steps. So first, you find the supervisor, and then um, send an application to him or her directly, asking if they have any any positions for the PhD students and if there would be an, a project to join. So then if you both agree that let's, let's continue on this project, then you make up a research plan and a funding plan, and then you apply for the, to the uh, doctoral program. Thank you very so much, Katri. It, it all starts with your interests, of course. You find a, a supervisor who is working on, on a field that interests you. And, and of course, I'm sure that he or she uh, would like you to have some kind of a, a background that is useful for the project or, or that you're at least uh, capable of learning the methods and the uh, and, uh, the facts that are needed for the project. Thank you very much, Katri. Next question uh, is submitted by Mafalda, asking if uh, research on consumer neurosciences and neuromarketing uh, would be within the scope of the program. Doesn't ring any bells, <laughs> so I, I think I, I would give a negative answer to this one. Thank you, Yuha. And now returning uh, back uh, to Dr. Vagdiano's question, saying that unfortunately in his country, they don't have a lot of opportunities to do practical, to have practical experience uh, in the neuroscience field. Would uh, he still be eligible for applying without the uh, practical yeah. experience? Yeah, yeah, you would. So it doesn't matter if your bachelor's degree is, is purely theoretical. Okay, then we have good news for Dr. Vagdiano. 
And then let's see, uh, Paul would like to know what is the normal duration of a PhD program? Um, that's four years. So basically you should be able to uh, do the research work needed for the, the doctoral, uh, the PhD thesis and the courses included during the four years time. So that's uh, for the doctoral programs, it will be 40 ECTS credit points needed for the doctoral um, studies. We have one more question uh, regarding the doctoral program. Now we would like to know what is the tuition fee for the doctoral program coming from Pakistan, so a non-EU citizen? There are no tuition fees for the doctoral programs. Good news then for Navid. Thank you, Katri. Uh, let's see, um, Dimitri um, is asking if there's, there are any, there's any possibility of joining a research program for experience and training purposes independently of the master's or the PhD and then possibly carrying on to do a master's degree. Well, I guess in this case, uh, he should conduct directly a research group leader and agree about their project and the details related to that project with the research group leader, with a PI, and then uh, once working on this project, then uh, look for the possibilities to join the master's program as well. Sorry, thank you very much for your answer. And as you can see, today's presenters are at your uh, disposal, so feel free to submit your questions through the Q&A panel. Uh, and something just came in through the chat panel, actually. Let's see. Mm. Uh -huh. This is, I believe, for Michaela Matila from FETIE. In application process, do they need to upload the transcripts or do they need to mail them directly? Uh, all the documents should be mailed per, like, regular mail. And the mailing address will be available, or where to mail them will be available on the only online application form. But all documents should be mailed in, not not sent electronical or like per email or anything like that. Very much. And this just in from Jonathan, uh, thanking you for your clear presentation. And he would like to know if it's possible to apply for the program with a Finnish physiotherapy degree acquired in an international program. I'm not sure, uh, Yuka, could you help? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, think, I, I'm, I'm thinking, um, I don't know, Katri and Sari, uh, have, have they had any, any sort of similar cases before? So I'm, I'm thinking physiotherapy degree acquired in an international program. So uh, if, is that a university level, sort of a university bachelor level degree or... Uh, Uh, a Finnish, uh, what we call um, degree, yeah. will be eligible, but uh, the international degree, what it is actually, the details of, of the degree itself will be the uh, yeah. important factor to know. Yeah, if, if this is if this is a, a sort of a degree obtained in what we call in Finland ammattikorkeakoulu, so, so uh, students graduating from those are, are eligible, but uh, we also do require um, some uh, research experience in the field of neuroscience. So the details can be found on, uh, on, on the faculty website where we have the uh, selection criteria for students with this background. So I would recommend sort of checking the instructions from there. So the Faculty of Biological and Environmental Sciences and how to apply. Thank you very much. Uh, it seems we have covered all of the questions submitted either through the Q&A or through the chat panel. Again, this would be a call to action to our today's audience members. Uh, feel free to submit further questions through each of the, uh, the panels, whatever is easier to you guys. Uh, otherwise, uh, if there will be no further questions, we will be wrapping up the session shortly. Allow me to give you some more time by reminding you as well that we have a poll underway uh, within the polling panel, should be beneath Q&A and beneath chat. See, we have uh, quite some responses, so thank you to those that have finished it. Just a reminder to those uh, that are currently in the progress, uh, make sure that you do click on the submit button, uh, which should be on the bottom right-hand uh, corner within that panel, otherwise your efforts will be lost. 
so I see that that helped. Thank you very much, guys. And something also just came in through the Q&A from Paul. What are the opportunities for a tech startup and incubation? Mm, I don't quite get the question. Uh, to be honest, Yuka, uh, I would like to ask Paul if he can uh, further uh, elaborate on this question. So I'm guessing here, Paul, is that what are uh, sort of uh, career prospects or opportunities for employment in a tech startup or an... Uh, perhaps we can wait for Paul to clarify, uh, and this just in from Jonathan. Uh, what would you say are the strengths of the neuroscience program uh, compared to other programs abroad? Well, I think sort of many of us can, can make comments on this because we, we sort of have been working with students coming from abroad. So one comment what I, I frequently get from uh, students coming from India, Nepal, China, and so on, so that they, they, they initially when they come here, they are surprised uh, to see how, how much freedom they have uh, uh, in, in, in choosing from, from a wide variety of courses and, and this flexibility, how you can build your own degree is one of the things they appreciate a lot. The other thing is that you get uh, involved, sort of you get to know the researchers from the very beginning of your studies here. So you are part of the neuroscience community. And, and uh, I think in Finland, compared to many other programs, the opportunities you will have uh, to work in research groups in real sort of neuroscience research, those options of, and possibilities are better than in, in many other places. So uh, I, I guess sort of Sari might want to add something. Uh, or... Well, what I have in mind are pretty much the same things that you already pointed out. So basically here you are able to personalize your degree from uh, um, after already very early stage of, of the degree. So we have this first half a year of compulsory courses. After that, basically, you can choose the field of neuroscience that most interests you and focus on studying particularly that field and start to work in a research lab very early on. And that is the main reason many of our students have cho chosen our, uh, our program. and They have been usually very happy about it. Thank you very much, Sari. Uh, and the next question is from Statis. If this program, this master's program, covers the field of neurolinguistics? Not really, no. Thank you. And then uh, Vipke is asking out of interest, um, how many applicants do you have each year? For how many uh, slots? And what is the most important uh, criteria selection? Is it the grades, recommendation letter, Oh, uh, and I'm guessing that's it, yes. Yeah, I can take this one. I actually just found some statistics from last year. So last year, 84 people um, applied for the neuroscience uh, program and 13 were accepted. And this year there will be 20 study places. And for the selection process, um, the admission depends on your completed studies and their grades, and also on the progress of your previous studies in relation to their, their duration and the appropriateness of the previous degree. I don't know, maybe someone else could fill in, but those are the basic, basic search and process requirements. <clears throat> yeah, maybe I would add that sort of uh, we are not only looking for students uh, who have been uh, sort of focusing on neuroscience because of this high flexibility among studies, because you can you can you can sort of uh, sort of uh, focus on systems neuroscience, brain imaging, electrophysiology, molecular level in your degree. So uh, your, the, the the suitable backgrounds sort of vary quite a lot. So so uh, we are just looking for good students who are highly motivated. Thank you, Yuha. Uh, and uh, this just sent through the chat panel. Uh, I believe that Mathuri joined us a bit later. How can they apply for this course, is the question. 
Yes. So the online application will be available on studyinfo.fi and the application period is from December 1st, 2016 to January 12th, 2017. Thank you very much. And then Jonathan is saying, in your experience, uh, what were the biggest challenges for students coming from another discipline of studies? Well, that of course depends what is the background. So, uh, for example, we have had uh, previously students with a background in psychology, and they have had problems in understanding the basic cell biology processes. Um, but if you are coming from uh, engineering, then the basic biology might be your your uh, challenge. So this is uh, difficult to answer without knowing the mm -hmm. specific, specific yeah. background. I, I would like to add here that that this since since we have sort of seen students coming with different backgrounds, so we have sort of uh, restructured the, the first autumn term. So we will next next year we will start by teaching. Uh, cell biology, cell physiology, in order to make sure that all students have the required knowledge in these fields. And then we will sort of continue to different fields in neurosciences. Thank you very much. And now uh, Paul followed up, uh, followed up with his question. If there are, uh, if there's any incubation center for application of research-based knowledge and explore the possible application and commercialize it. So it's not, not really sort of directly connected to our master's program, but, but maybe Mikhail Matila can make a comment on, on, on sort of this issue, um, sort of con considering the whole university and the, and the strategy of the whole university. Mm, yeah, I'm still not quite sure if I understand the question. Mm. Mm. I'm sorry, I don't really know how to answer that question. <laughs> um, um, let me let me just give one example. So that yeah. there are there are research groups doing uh, sort of working on neurodegenerative diseases, and uh, sort of uh, many of the research groups all do also file patent applications. There's a commercial company called Herantis, which has a website. So that the uh, they are uh, they are sort of, uh, sort of developing novel drugs to uh, Parkinson's disease and, and Alzheimer's and so on. So. There are sort of, it's, it's mainly sort of activity uh, in, in certain research groups, which, which uh, sort of has this commercial uh, dimension. So, so sort of second thought, this, this dimension is present here, although it's not, not sort of directly part of our, our courses we are teaching. Thank you, Juha. I believe that Paul will appreciate the effort. And uh, having no further questions, I believe uh, it is time to wrap up the session. But I'm sure that a few of the attendees might have a question more. Uh, just allow me to again check on the progress of the poll. Mm -hmm. Let's see something just came in from uh, Jonathan. Jonathan would like to thank you very much for today's presentation and taking the time to answer all of the questions in depth. And uh, I believe that on that note then, it is time to end the session uh, and actually to thank our audience members for joining today. And I'm sure that you guys did get the necessary information for studying the uh, master's program in neuroscience at the University of Helsinki. And on behalf of the university, I believe it's safe to say that we sure hope that some of you are considering in applying. So thank you very much once again. And of course, a special thank you to all of today's presenters, to Juha Sari, to Mikaelas, and to Katri as well. Uh, perhaps at this point, it would be wise to ask you if you have any closing comments before we say goodbye. Uh, I would like to thank you all for attending, and I really look forward to seeing uh, a lot of new and excited uh, and hardworking neuroscience students next year. I also want to thank uh, our moderator and uh, all, all you have, who have been following this webinar. So I hope that you enjoyed this webinar and that it gave you helpful information. So if, um, we have said several times that more information is available on our program website. But if you have specific questions, so feel free to contact us. It's our task and our pleasure to provide answers to you. So um, we are really looking forward to receiving your application. So thank you and goodbye.
Thank you indeed once again to all of the participants. And this is Simon wishing you perhaps a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening from wherever you may be. Thank you for joining and goodbye.